Hi, I'm Gary White for Channel 6 Central Kentucky Television. I'm here with Dr. Trish Ciccone at Central Kentucky Optometric Associates with offices in Lebanon and Springfield. And we're here for our eye care news. Once a month we get together and ask some questions of Dr. Ciccone. And I have two questions that I've been asked to ask you. Okay. And one of them has to do with medication. Okay. Is it possible if they're prescribed some kind of medication mm -hmm. for something mm -hmm. that it could ultimately affect their eyesight? Yes, um, there are many medications that do have um, direct or indirect effect on your vision um, or um, on your ocular health. So the, the answer would be yes. Um, um, some of the ones that come off the top of my head right away, probably one of the number one um, thing is a lot of medications cause or contribute or exacerbate dry eyes. Mm -hmm. um, antihistamines are probably the number one in that category there. They will, um, just like they dry your nose and your mouth up, they dry the, the mucous membranes of your eyes up and will um, either contribute or cause a dry eye or make a mild dry eye, um, you know, worse. So that would be one. Um, two, um, a medication that we actually um, monitor quite a few people um, for is Plaquenil um, or hydroxychloroquine. It's a medication that people take for rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and other autoimmune disorders. And um, after um, use um, for five years or more, it can create a retinal toxicity that is not reversible. So um, anybody taking Plaquenil or hydroxychloroquine needs to be monitored regularly and at least annually with a visual field and an OCT of, of your macula. Um, Topamax is a medication that um, people take for lots of different reasons. The main use for it is as an anti-seizure, anti-epileptic medication. A lot of women take it for migraine headaches. And Topamax can cause um, increased um, um, myopia or cause an, an artificial increase in myopia and cause angle closure, acute angle closure, glaucoma. So folks on Topamax need to be aware that if they're having any visual or eye side effects that they should be seen. Um, amiodarone um, is a medication that's used to, to regulate heartbeat and usually taken for an arrhythmia. Amiodarone can cause some toxicity of the optic nerve and can cause um, um, optic nerve toxicity and also in most people who take amiodarone they'll have kind of a signature world keratopathy of pigment de deposition in their cornea. Um, birth control pills um, can cause a lot of vascular problems, can cause blood clots and, and can cause um, uh, um, pseudotumor cerebri um, as well as um, some other medications that can cause that too, doxycycline, tetracyclines, um, minocycline, those can cause some, some side effects there too. So there's a whole bunch of medications that can have some, some ocular side effects and vision side effects there. Um, one that we see kind of often, um, and we think it, it, you know, you think it's kind of funny is folks who put those scopolipine patches on when they go for cruises. They put that patch on their neck and then rub their eye after touching the patch. They can cause their pupil to dilate and then they can't see up, si uh, up, up close because it uh, causes a cycloplegic effect and we'll usually see them. I went on this cruise and, and I, now my pupil's real big and I can't see up close. <laughs> and said, well, did you put a, 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 a seasickness patch on? Well, I did. <laughs> yeah. said, well, that's what that's from. <laughs> But that's treatable. So you just have to wait for it to wear off, and some right. of those it can take a while, a couple of weeks for that to wear oh, off. <laughs> okay. Now, if somebody has started taking a new medicine and they're noticing a change in their eyesight, I guess that's at the point where they should potentially come yeah. see you. or They should always come and, and see us and um, check with their physician who prescribed the medication. And, and mm -hmm. um, their physician should be pretty well versed on, on um, what kind of side effects. And if they don't know, they can, they can look it up. But certainly you can come to see us and we're pretty well versed on which medications cause what problems. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Another question that I had been asked was with the effects of uh, black spots in their eyes. Mm -hmm. Is that something 
common or something to be concerned about? Floaters are very, very common. And when someone sees like a little speck floating across their eye or it look like, can look like a little cobweb in your vision, mm -hmm. um, if your floaters are new or different than anything you've ever noticed before or if they are or aren't associated with flashing lights, it's always a good idea to come on in and, and get it checked out. We all probably will develop some floaters um, in our vision um, sometime or another in our lifetime, but if the floaters are new, if they're worsening, if they're changing, or if they're associated with a decrease in vision or flashing lights in your vision, those all are reasons to come on in and let us check them out. We want to make sure, one, that you don't have a tear or a hole or a pending detachment of your retina associated with those floaters, or two, other things if you have vitritis or iritis or inflammation or infection in your eye, sometimes those can be associated with floaters also. And so, you know, if you see new floaters, different floaters, or flashing lights with your floaters, those are all reasons to come on in and get it checked out. Mm -hmm. And what causes the floaters, if, you know, everybody's at some point might get one, what's the cause? The, the normal formation of floaters is actually kind of a normal aging change that occurs in, in our eyes. The vitreous, which is kind of the jelly in the posterior chamber, the back of our eye, um, kind of helps when we're young, helps our eye hold its shape and provides nutrients to the retinal tissue and, and such. Well, the vitreous, when we're born, it's kind of like jello jigglers. <laughs> it's, it's kind of firm, but kind of jiggly, but solid. Mm -hmm. As we age and mature, it kind of melts and it gets more viscous, more solution-like, more kind of just like a thick sloshy gel in the back of our eye and so it starts moving around in the back of the eye and it collapses on itself and kind of pulls away from the back of the eye. As it pulls away it often will pull some connective tissue that's holding it up um, with it and that's generally what causes the floater but on a rare occasion it can pull a little too hard and cause a little tug or a little pull in a uh, hole in the retina or a tear in the retina or a detachment in the retina and um, the holes or tears can lead to retinal detachments or sometimes it might pull on a little blood vessel and cause a little bleed in the back of the eye or it might cause a little shower of pigment in the back of the eye if it pulls too hard. So those are all signs. Um, if, if the floaters change, you see new floaters, different floaters, floaters with a change in vision or floaters um, associated with flashing lights. All of, it's better just to come on in and let us get a look and make sure we know we can tell you what's going on. So the majority of floaters probably are benign in nature and don't cause, but that 10% <laughs> that do cause trouble, you know, you want to, if, if there's a hole or a tear in your retina, you want to get to it before it leads to a detachment. Sometimes you don't have a warning and it just happens all the time. Or sometimes you might get the floater and then a month later get the tear or the detachment in the retina. So there's kind of a process that we go through as far as monitoring you over a period of time for that. Mm -hmm. Well, there's some questions that our viewers had asked for Dr. Ciccone. If you have a question, feel free to email us at info at channel6tv.com, and we'll pass that question along to Dr. Ciccone here at Central Kentucky Optometric Associates. Again, they have offices in Lebanon and Springfield. Give them a call and set up an appointment. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. It's been Gary White for Channel 6, Central Kentucky Television.